Hey guys, Tomboy61, and today we are continuing our series of looking at all of the Azur Lane Wave 3 commanders to determine if any, if we misjudged any of them, if any of them might actually be worth it. Today, we're taking out Azur Lane Shokaku, and you may be Tommy, you may be saying, Tommy, I thought we were taking out Sh these, these ships with, these commanders with the ships that they're named after, and I have two reasons for not picking out Shokaku. One. I don't have Shokaku unlocked. I'll be straight up honest with you. And number two, I think given the skills that Shokaku has, I think Zuiho is actually the aircraft carrier that you want to pick. Now, if you don't know what the shtick of Zuiho is, well, it is the stealthy aircraft carrier. Of course, it was a bit odd when it first came out, when it actually had the highest concealment of any aircraft carrier but then they nerfed all the other aircraft carriers except for Zuiho and then we got Zuiho as the stealthiest aircraft carrier and we're not just talking about the ship itself we're also talking about its airplanes Ryujo the other tier 5 Japanese aircraft carrier HE bombers you're looking at about a 10 kilometer concealment range at base and to a torpedo bomber you're looking at about uh, 7.5 kilometers Compare that to Zuiho, where both styles of plane, that's HE and Torpedo, have a base detectability of 7. So both of them are stealthier to begin with. We take that and then we look at Shokaku's uh, overall kind of skills. And you'll notice her tier, her third skill slot has Crane's Protection. And what that does is it gives concealment to both dive bombers and to the torpedo bombers and it does this in a kind of a weird way everything else on that tier that's out of sight and hidden threat it takes one style of plane whether that be the bomber or the torpedo bomber gives it the same concealment rating that the cranes protection does, but it also buffs the hit points of the plane but once again you're kind of trading off that boost in hit points to being able to boost both of the concealment ratings for both styles of plane so what does that mean? Well, it means Crane's protection is a bit of a weird mix because let's be clear. I feel like the main reason I chose that third tier slot most of the time before this was because I was choosing it for the, the HP boost. I wasn't really going for concealment of the planes, which is unfortunate because I think concealment of the planes could be really cool, right? It is a very cool concept of being able to kind of surprise your your the enemy ships with your planes maybe having being able to get that concealment down to five kilometers but as it currently stands as it currently stands or you you can only really uh get it down to just over six and a little bit which isn't that great like they're even at five kilometers, I think ships have plenty of time to kind of maneuver out of the way if they're paying attention to ships. I think that's the kind of idea with Shokaku and being able to buff the concealment is to be able to quickly get in, strike, and get out. Of course, having that concealment also means you won't be uh, bombarded by as much AA. Mind you, the majority of AA is within five kilometers to begin with, so I don't even see the issue there. And I think this is the reason why Shokaku doesn't really work that well as a as an aircraft carrier commander i think the bonuses don't work well i don't i don't think there really is a reason to buff the concealment when the thing that you probably were going for that skill that skill line for was that that hp boost now if i was to attempt to fix it i think what i would have done is given the base trait an additional concealment boost to aircraft as well. Right now, Shokaku's uh, base trait boosts the speed of your aircraft carrier, and it does it up to five percent. One, I don't think there, I don't think five percent extra speed on your aircraft carrier is ever really going to make a difference. I don't think there's ever going to be a meta build that five percent extra aircraft speed is gonna get you up and above and over the moon and get you to where, you know, you have this ultimate build. I just don't see that occurring, okay? Plain and simple. Two, I think that as a base trait, aircraft uh, concealment could be a really cool thing to spec into. It could kind of play uh, an additional new role in, in, in the game, you know, a new way to play the aircraft carriers where you really are kind of being, being able to conceal and being able to take off closer to 
to the main party of, of the match, to the main areas of the match, just because you're, you're not, your aircraft aren't being spotted as soon as they go up in the air. But that is kind of why I'm saying Shokaku maybe needs, um, maybe needs a rework. Maybe it might not just be a, a useful ship to begin with. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Shokaku. One other thing before we start talking about the match, I want to talk about the map and these new smaller size maps and how much I am enjoying them being able to kind of get new content from the old content. If you didn't know, a couple of the maps got these kind of sized down uh, versions of the maps where they take out some of the extra lanes and they force the combat to come a little bit closer. I have absolutely been loving these styles of maps. They've been forcing different ways to play especially this map where now the AC side over here really is a harder place to play because you can't go so far out, out to, to the, to the West. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. And uh, I, I say bravo to the, the people at Wargaming because this is a great way to take old maps and give a little bit of spin just because we're taking down the playable area in them. And I've been absolutely loving it. So like I said, Brava. It does it does hurt carrier play a little just because it does take all the ships that would normally be in that larger area and force them into a even smaller area. But am I really caring about carrier the, the quality of carrier matches? No, not really. Anyways, let's get on to the match. And with this map, we get this kind of common occurrence where there just becomes a a a suction, a black hole forming inside of B, and I understand why. A and C are a difficult place to play, and B is a fun place to play, and it makes you want to come over here. It makes you want to contest inside the the Thunderdome that is B. There's all those islands to play with. It is a great little section of map, and if you're a cruiser player or a destroyer player, it is made just for you. And you know, I I I you know absolutely love it. But that is where the majority of all of this has been going on. Our team currently in the lead. We're doing decently as the Ryujo. Our team takes out that last, uh, that or not the last, but that one battleship in the cap. We've seen that they have an enemy kamikaze on the team, and we see that our team is willing to shoot at it, and we can see there is a California sort of pushing towards us. So we need to start dumping our planes and dumping our ships at both of these guys. Keep the uh keep the kamikaze spotted when we can but also start concentrating on knocking down this california we can see we're trying to start to flee the area and ha 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 i know i joked about speed not making a difference but really is it going to make a difference i don't think so anyways we're going to start making our attack runs here on the california we've done decently so far getting thirty thousand damage and a couple of good uh key plays here and there california being smart turning into the torpedoes this is something that i see a lot of people um, not do. And I want to call out this California player for doing it right. When you're under torpedo attack, especially when it's at 90 degrees like this, you should always try to turn into the torpedoes. And the reason that is, is if you see, we are letting go of those torpedoes relatively close to when they can arm to the California. If that California can cross that line of unarming the torpedoes, then what would have potentially been a fairly uh, substantial hit to him then becomes a hit that does nothing. Uh, and I, I see a lot of people whenever they're under plane attack try to turn out, which gives those torpedoes a longer amount of time to arm. I do think the best play, the best bet is to do the opposite. And that is to turn into the torpedoes uh, because you may have a chance to be able to get them to not arm. And when you do that, you you, ne you negate the damage uh, that they could do. Anyways, we're making another drop on this California. Like I said, we're kind of trying to keep an eye on both the Kamikaze and on this California. Uh, we get the fire started on the California. Of course, California, an excellent AA platform. So uh, fly in these planes when we hit that flak like that. We are just going to melt. And this is where picking out Crane's protection over the additional hit points of either out of sight or hidden threat kind of shows off where it hurts us because we were unable to really do anything about those, uh, about those, about the, the being taken out, right? We, we did not have the hit points to stay in the area. And that is the trade-off we're making. 
And now we do spot the Kamikaze. We have noticed our teammates have a willingness to shoot at the destroyer. So we're gonna go ahead and just hover and keep it spotted. We see our friendly cruiser is having these beautiful angles to try to take it out. Kamikaze doesn't have much health left, but we do need to be cautious because, well, we are spotted. We are getting within range of this Kamikaze uh, and he's spotting us. So we are about to take a massive hit from the California. Get, he gets the high cal, good on him. Um, we can see our, that cruiser uh, kind of taking cover and unfortunately he's about to break the line of sight between himself and the kamikaze which means he will not be able to shoot him so we are going to have to drop on this kamikaze yet what would not be the greatest angle and as we can see what we were talking about before if this kamikaze had turned in right here um he those torps would not have armed but because he turned out we hit him on the nose right there kamikaze taken care of thankfully we are no longer spotted because we only have three thousand hit points left from this california and it is now time to take our revenge on this California because God damn it, if he didn't take all of our health, we're going to ruin his day. Even if it means throwing away the rest of our planes as we take him down. We had gotten that fire on him a bit earlier and now uh, it looks like he's either put it out or it's kind of extinguished on its own regards. Maybe one of our teammates was able to hit him with HG because as we drop these torpedoes, we get a beautiful notification of flooding. He gets the clear sky, but that flooding ain't stopping and he didn't have much health to go. So uh, he disappears, drops off the map, going for the C cap, good on him, trying to flip that cap, to get his team a couple more points. And uh, he ends up flooding out. So that was a perma flood, good on us. We are up to 66,000 damage. And now there's just one other ship left in the game. It's an aircraft carrier. I won't bore you with the rest of this match because we get a we get a drop in on him, and it just takes us so long to fly over there. It's not worth it. So, I'll go ahead and wrap this up. The main point of this video was to look at uh, the Zuiho using Shokaku, trying to go for a full stealth build on the ship, and seeing if it was an effective way to play. Was it? Meh. I didn't feel any real. Uh, boost from Shokaku. I don't think uh, the concealment value given by by uh, Crane's protection really warrants uh, the purchase of Shokaku, nor does it enable a new style of play, which is what I look for in these Azur Lane commanders. I don't think it really does that. So I wouldn't recommend playing it. If they went in and buffed that skill, maybe, maybe. But as of now, I would, I would stay away from Shokaku. Just, it just isn't worth it. So yeah, guys, that's the video for today. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. See ya.